This is Ontario, California, electric iron capital of the world. An activist in the United Electrical Workers, Trudy Southern, worked here for years. Now she has health problems doctors say are work-related. I worked uh, going on 29 years when I retired. I worked uh, five years in the thermostat department where we assembled the thermostat for the iron and we, we made flat irons in our plant. I worked there five years when I was transferred into the core department. And the rest of my time working in the plant, I worked in the core department until about the last three years or four years of my work there. Working in the core department it was something that you finally, I suppose, you get used to because it was there every day. But it's uh, the fumes, the smoke, the asbestos in the air. Um, it was quite common for all of us to be halfway ill, you know, from the, from the different elements that we worked with. But the most difficult thing to get used to was the constant dust in the air all the time where you'd be clogged up, your sinuses would be clogged, your throat from inhaling it. But at that time we didn't know what it was, so, you know, didn't think too much about it. But would fuss about not having blowers working right. One of our machines we called Old Smokey because it not only until they got a new machine to strip the cord, it bellowed out smoke and mixed with the dust from the asbestos uh, in the air. You can imagine what it would feel like working on that. Uh, another interesting job that had to be done, we got, we'd get poor material occasionally, and our cords would come in with little lumps in the cord, uh, so that it made it hard to extrude the wires. So we had people on day rate sitting at tables just at the back of all of the rest of us who were working on individual piecework. And in order to soften those cords so that they could be more pliable, the girls would pick up the cords and hit them against the tables like this. So that that dust was just flying everywhere because they beat the cord until it was soft and pliable. But none of us thought about any of the particular danger of those things. It was bad that you had to brush the dust off, I guess, and you went out at noon and uh, blow the dust off your coffee cup. It was sitting by your side. But we didn't think about it being dangerous. We got used to it. I worked in the cord department 19 years before I even knew what the cord was made of. The company at no time ever told us that it was asbestos that we were working with or that it was dangerous, whatever we were working with. And then we think back about the people who have died in the past who worked in the cord department. We're wondering, I'm wondering and have so many times wondered if that was not asbestos related. Trudy and many co-workers have filed claims for asbestos-related diseases. So I think we have two or three cases who will eventually in the next few years die, and I literally mean in the next two or three years. It's amazing how the company is reacting because uh, while we've all been told that it's definitely due to asbestos, the company has never in any way indicated that they go along with it, that they recognize uh, that we have a problem, that they are sympathetic, or that they are concerned. Well, maybe this is true of most any plant you work in. Once you're out, you're just, you're forgotten as far as that's concerned. We know that by sort of the way we're paid when we get out and all of those kind of things, you know. We're, we served our purpose, and they're not too concerned about us now, and I think their main concern is, can, how can they get out of this fight to pay the people in a small part for giving up their lives, working their lives in the conditions that we had there.